I'm, I'm simply saying that life finds a way. It's time. It's time to have real, honest, open, difficult, and inspiring conversations. It's time for Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. I hope you are doing well today. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know, I tell you every single time. It's WURD, radio.com. Today is Tuesday, April 11th. Do you believe it? I still don't believe it. I I don't know. I feel like we were just talking about New Year, New Year's resolutions, and here we are in April, and I'm planning for the summer. What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> but in any event, I guess that's a good thing, though, right? That means I'm hopeful and I'm looking forward. So I'm going to receive that. I'm going to take that. Okay. I hope you are, too. I really do. I hope all is coming along well with and for you and yours. And, you know, I tell you every single episode. To our family members whose light is shining just a little dimly, I'm sending all of my extra, 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 extra love and hugs to each and every one of you because, you know, sometimes we need that. I know I do. I hope y'all will send me some extra love when I need it. Let me get adjusted. My big comfy chair is swallowing me today. Let me. <laughs> I'm having all kinds of issues already. <laughs> In any event, um, hey. Hey there to our family on our socials. Let me know that you're with us. Let me know that you'll be uh, joining the conversation with us. You know, we have an amazing guest because we always do. We always do. Our amazing guest will be talking with us about some very interesting things. And I strongly encourage you to call in and talk with us. And you know, you can do so by dialing 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. And um, you know that if you'd like to leave us a comment on our socials, you know you can do so. You know, you already know. For those of you who didn't know, because most of our family members already know that. But <laughs> And if you do so, I promise I promise I will do my best to read it on the air. So I know y'all don't want to hear me talk for the entire two hours and the time goes by so quickly. So let's jump in. Okay. I would like to introduce you to tonight's guest. She is a motivational speaker. She's an activist, an author, and she is a woman of God. Yes, she is currently a radiation therapy and she has been a radiation therapist and she has been for the past eight years. In December of 2020, she received her doctoral degree in public administration at Westchester University. Her primary focus for her dissertation with federal health reform, breast cancer outcomes, with a focus on how young women are being diagnosed with breast cancer. She has made it her mission to fight for reform in the healthcare system and to educating the community about breast cancer and to raising awareness about resources. She wrote and directed A Letter to My Sisters, a breast cancer documentary for young women, which gives insight into the journey 
of young women dealing with breast cancer and a new diagnosis. Family, I invite you to meet Dr. Nia Imani Bailey. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Can I just say, just real quick, I love your earrings. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Philly, Philly, Philly. I'm going to have to, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you said that because you know, uh -huh. he's an extraordinary jeweler and he's in Philadelphia. That is awesome. Yes. I knew rock. <laughs> I, knew love rock. I knew rock. I, I love these earrings. Everybody, you know, what's so funny. Uh -huh. I was at an event and a woman came up to me. She said, Carol, Carol. I said, yes. Yeah. She said, oh, you don't know me, but I know those earrings. I know <laughs> your earrings. I was like, oh, okay. She said, those are your signature. It was so funny. I love it. I started thinking, is it? I guess it is because I want to. amazing. Time. It should be. <laughs> How about that? But I want to say thank you. Thank you so much again for joining us and, and coming to talk with us about such an important topic. Okay. I have to be honest with you. I am so uneducated about breast cancer. I know nothing about the resources and, and I am embarrassed to say so because I've had family members um, who were diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, two, two cousins of mine um, that I grew up with who are no longer here. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I should know more as I'm, as I'm saying. So I was so excited to have you come and talk with us because family, now, you know, you know, I love education and I like for all of us to be educated. So, I, and I think it's important. Absolutely. Yes, it's it so is. important. And I'm negligent in that regard. So I said, well, if I'm helping me, let me help you too. Let me help yes, everybody. Yeah. Else, so. Thank you. Yes. That's awesome. So it, it, now I believe, I believe I've read that you're from West Philadelphia. Is that correct? Born and raised right across from Tustin. <gasps> <Wow>. <laughs> Philly born and bred. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. All about my Philly cheese steaks, you know, pretzels, you know. Oh, <laughs> I need to stay away from them pretzels. Well, I need to stay, stay away from the cheese steaks so we can <laughs> hold each other accountable. Okay. Thank you. Because those pretzels are a problem for yes, me. Yes. I love those pretzels. Yes. So please talk to us. Tell us a little bit about you and your journey thus far. Oh, my goodness. So let's see. I became a radiation therapist because my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer when I was a sophomore in high school. So that's when I kind of understood what radiation therapy was. I had no clue what that, you know, what that was. Sure. Um, and I always wanted to be in the medical field. So uh, my family always called me doctor from a little age. So at <laughs> first I wanted to be an obstetrician, just like Cliff was on the Cosby show. Mm. Just like, right. <laughs> so I said, okay, my parents, Curry and Narda, my parents said, you know what, you volunteer and see if that's what you like. I volunteered and I said, no, ma'am. No, sir. I do not, <laughs> not okay, want to be an obstetrician. <laughs> well, then they called me. <laughs> Baby. They called me Sister Soldier. So they said, you know, if you were born in the 60s, you would have been a Black Panther. How about you be a civil rights lawyer? Sure. I volunteered. No. 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 Okay. No, no. no Miss Care. No. So it wasn't until my father was diagnosed. I volunteered in radiation oncology and I said, this is exactly what I want to do. Loved every moment of it. Well, if I might interject, could you share with our family members first what radiation therapy is? Absolutely. Absolutely. So radiation therapy treats the primary site of a patient, meaning the site that has the problem or the cancer. So if, I'm, um, if a patient comes in for breast cancer, I'm treating their breast brain, I'm treating their brain, I'm treating that soul site or multiple sites that give them the problem. The mm. difference between radiation therapy and chemotherapy, radiation is that primary site, it's very localized. Chemotherapy is systemic, so it treats your entire body. That is why when a person has breast cancer and they receive chemotherapy, their hair falls out, their nails look different, they may have pain in their feet and their hands, that's why radiation or excuse me, chemotherapy systemic, your entire mm -hmm. body gets hit and radiation is very localized. So I focus on the very localized specific portion of the body. So is one, I know that they're different or is one better than the other? No, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. They both um, are very important in a person's um, cancer journey. 
Okay. So it's okay. both very important because um, chemotherapy kind of gets all of the radi or add all of the cancer that we may not see with the eye. So it's very important to have that. Radiation is kind of our insurance policy to make sure that everything that we did, we did correctly. So we zap uh -huh. that more just to make sure, you know, it doesn't come back. So now I'm thinking, as you're saying this, so if a person is diagnosed with cancer yeah. and uh, it spreads, so the, it's in different locations of, of their body, would they receive, would, would they still be able to receive radiation therapy or would chemotherapy be the better? Route? So it, it really depends on um, where it is. Okay. Um, but usually the physician will determine the best course. So usually, for example, if I'm treating a breast cancer patient and her disease has metastasized or spread, mm -hmm. if she has a problem, say it spread to her sacrum and it's hurting her sacrum, then we would radiate that sacrum to for pain relief. So we would do that. Nia, Dr. Bailey, I'm going to tell you now, I don't know what a sacrum is. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to say that some of our family members are going to say, "What is she talking about?" <laughs> tailbone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you can call me the you don't have to call me doctor, but tailbone. So if that's hurting her, okay. then we would <laughs> we would radiate that. So okay. you know, it just it depends. It really depends. Oh, oh my goodness. I want to take this time to just say hello to our family members who are letting us know that they are here with us on our socials. Cheryl, hi there. <laughs> Cheryl Brown, thank you so much for joining us. Nasir, hey there. Hello to you. Peace and blessings to you all. Um, we, we love that you're here joining the conversation with us. We um, encourage you if you have any questions or want to comment at all, to do so by calling us at 215-634-8065 or by calling us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. We are talking uh, with none other than Dr. Nia Imani Bailey, um, who is talking with us about radiation and re radiation therapy. And I'm, I'm asking all sorts of questions because I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. So I, I'm curious. Well, actually, I would prefer that you do more of the speaking, but there's so much that I want to no, know. What, what, what made you, you said you chose, you know, you were uh, looking into different um, like careers, but then you decided, okay, this is it. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. What was it about radiation and oncology that? I think it was the connection. So I'm with patients between, so a patient can receive one treatment or they can have treatments for seven weeks. So you really have a bond with them. You mm -hmm. really see them Monday through Friday and hopefully you like them because you're with them for so long. And that's typically what happens. And we really become more than patient and um, technologists. You really become family and friends. And I loved that connection. I love that bond. That's okay. something that you can't really receive anywhere else. Um, so that's that's what did it for me. So I, I, um, I love that. I love, love, love that, the connection. So with chemotherapy, mm -hmm. well, I'll ask you this. What is the difference in the process? I know that you said that radiation therapy is localized, mm -hmm. but chemotherapy is all over the body. So mm -hmm. what is the diff what is the what are the different processes? Uh, it, it varies on chemotherapy. So chemotherapy can be a pill form and you'll take that daily. It can be uh, IV and you may have that once a week, twice a week, um, a week, and then you're off. And then um, another week, it, it varies depending on that uh, diagnosis. Okay. Radiation, typically it's Monday through Friday, although we have had um, patients who receive radiation kind of um, every other day. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on uh, the individual the diagnosis, the the stage. There's so many different um, factors that mm. it depends on what that looks like. So uh, when um, when a patient receives radiation therapy, are they too subject to some of the um, the things that happen to our body when we when we I, receive I, chemotherapy? Yes, absolutely. So typically, the chief complaint is being very tired because radiation can make you tired. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm treating a breast cancer patient, um, the chief complaint is not only um, fatigue, but kind of skin reddening, skin darkness, irritation. Um, 
if I'm treating the head, it can be a headache, abdomen area, nauseousness. Um, so depending, once again, on that site, there's certain um, symptoms that can happen from radiation. But it's like I said, it's typically more localized. So mm. if I'm treating um, your uh, breast, you should not receive a headache from the radiation. Um, okay. But you will receive um, skin changes and things like that that's focused on that primary site. When I think radiation, I, I, for whatever reason, I equate it to heat. <laughs> so it, is there a risk of being burned or are you? So we try to say radiation reaction and typically patients receive a reaction um, maybe two weeks into the treatment, okay. um, but you don't feel the radiation. So when the radiation is admitted, when it comes out, you don't feel anything. You don't see anything. You, doesn't, you don't even know that it's there. But usually weeks as it goes on, then you'll see, hey, my skin, you know, for um, people who are my complexion, my skin will get a little bit darker. Um, if you're Caucasian, your skin may look dark or a little red. So those are the type of reactions that you receive. But as far as feeling something, mm -hmm. you typically do not. Though I have heard patients say that they feel something. And I never say that that's not true because I've never gone through it. I just know textbook, you typically don't. But I've had patients say they have felt some type of heat. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, family, if you have just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D, radio.com. We have some more family members joining us on our socials, Kia Harris Carr. Hello. She says, this is such an important conversation. Thank you for that because I, I, I felt it would be, and I was hoping that it would be to you as well. Cheryl. Oh, and this pertains to the question I just asked you. Cheryl Brown wrote, I had breast cancer seven years ago. She said, sad to say I had radiation for seven weeks and it burned me to a crisp. Mm -hmm. She said she never wants to go through that again. She had stage two. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, I'm terribly sorry that you had that experience. I, I, and, and thank you for your transparency and your honesty, because that is what we do here on Love and Life. But I was, I'm so glad you did say that because I just had a question about that. Because mm -hmm. when I think radiation, mm -hmm. I think heat, I think intense mm -hmm. heat. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I think. It, um, so I'm curious to know, I'm curious to know so much, quite honestly, but at what point of a patient's diagnosis do you become involved? That's a very great question. Typically, I'm towards the end. So I keep going to breast because that's my, you mm -hmm. know, my thing. Um, so if a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, it depends on the stage, the size, all that. But I'm going to go typically mm -hmm. She'll start with chemo first typically to shrink that size of the tumor. And then once it's at an operable um, size, then they'll do surgery. So it could be a lumpectomy where they take out the lump. Okay. It can be a mastectomy where they take the breast tissue. Okay. So there's different types of surgery that, you know, the um, patient and um, the doctor can talk about what looks best for, you know, the woman and how the woman feels. And then you have to heal. Some women from there will go come to me and um, receive radiation. Some will go straight to chemo again and have chemo and then heal and oh. then have radiation. So it, it honestly, I'm sorry, I'm not really giving um, kind of standard answers. But it just no. it depends on um, the woman because sometimes after the surgery, there may be. Um, there may not be clear margins, meaning that there's still some cancer there. So they may have to go back in. They uh, may have to receive another round of chemo. So it, it just depends. But typically, I'm at the end of their journey. You know, I I didn't realize, and please excuse my ignorance, um, Dr. Bailey and family, but I did not realize that during a, a, a patient's breast cancer journey, they could receive both chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, That's a lot. It is a lot. They go through a lot. I have uh, patients can take a chemo pill daily and mm. also receive radiation or <sighs> IV. It, so it, it is taxing to their body. Absolutely. Mentally, physically, 
And these patients are smiling. They come in, hey, Nia, how are you? And, you know, that's when I say I cannot complain about anything because I'm sitting here, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so tired or whatever. But they're so joyful. They're happy. They're receiving mm -hmm. all of this and working, taking wives, taking working? care of them. Working. Okay. I <laughs> Nia, wait, because I'm I'm listening to you say this and my mind is reeling. Family, I'm going to take a second. Uh, if you have just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D, radio.com. We're talking with Dr. Nia Imani Bailey. We're talking right now about radiation, chemotherapy, um, breast cancer, and we have so much more to add to this conversation. Um, please, please, please stay with us because we will be right back. What's up, Philly? It's Solomon Jones. Don't look now, but the school year is almost over. But are you over the classroom experience at your local school? Maybe Commonwealth Charter Academy is the solution. Check out ccaeducate.me and learn more about the market leader in public cyber education. Did you know that over 4,000 students from Philly already attend CCA? Did you know that CCA has over 1,300 Certified teachers offering world-class instruction streamed into the safe confines of your home. Would it surprise you that CCA offers over 400 different classes and 900 field trips at no cost to you? In addition, every learner receives a headset, laptop, and help with internet connectivity at no cost whatsoever. If you're ready for your school to over-deliver on teaching, safety, and convenience, Check out ccaeducate.me today. That's ccaeducate.me. Experience what the New York Times called movement as communal celebration when Step Africa comes to the Kemo Cultural Campus, the first professional dance company dedicated to the tradition of stepping. This award-winning group blends percussive dance styles from historically African-American fraternities and sororities, traditional African dances, and an array of contemporary art forms into an exhilarating experience. The technique, agility, and pure energy makes each performance unique, leaving audiences energized and on their feet. Step Africa, one night only, Friday, April 20th. Get your tickets now at chemoculturalcampus.org. Self-monitor your blood pressure in four easy-to-remember steps. Self-monitoring is power. Visit managerbp.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. In partnership with the Office of Minority Health and Health Resources and Services Administration. Word Radio is the only African-American owned and operated talk radio station in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and one of only three remaining in the country. In the past 20 years, Word has evolved into a multimedia, multi-platform communications company that reaches deeply into the Black community through radio, events, digital, and social media. It is considered the go-to channel to engage, interact, and connect with Philadelphia's Black community. Our brand is built on the personal legacy of our founder, Walter P. Lomax, Jr., M.D. Dr. Lomax was a brilliant physician who established medical centers in underserved neighborhoods throughout Philadelphia to provide high-quality health care to Black and Brown communities for over 30 years. One of his most ambitious acquisitions was when he purchased WURD Radio. He understood the power of ownership and the power of independent media. Through Word, he wanted to ensure that Philadelphia's Black community had the ability to speak and be heard in their own voice. We are celebrating 20 years of Black excellence. We are celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media. Part-time job, full-time hustle, all-time Shiro to all of us. It's time for you, our Shiro, to stretch for the stars. A free online... You're listening to... You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Thank you. 
Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned into Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We are talking with Dr. Nia Imani Bailey. We've begun the conversation. Of, I'm asking her everything, everything, OMG. We, but we have so much to talk about. So <laughs> I'm all over the place because um, we started, she started talking about chemotherapy therapy and radiation in my mind just went running because everything um, hit me all at once. Um, thank you to our family members who are joining us on our so on our socials. It's such it, it just feels so good just to have you with us. But those of you who are listening, watching all of that good stuff, you know, we love you, too. Um, we also have some callers on the line. I do believe. Do we have a caller still there waiting to talk with us? I'm not sure. Hello, hello there. So oh, this is Ron, and uh, hello, Doctor and Cal. Hello, Ron. Hello there. How you doing? Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. I want to talk to you about this terrible disease that you're talking about tonight. I have experience with that. And the lady that raised me, she passed away in 1966. Doctor Malcolm Wright at Temple University, and I took care of her. Uh, with that disease. And I had to go down Central Supplies to get the special type of uh, sterilized uh, utensils, I mean, things to use on her body. And I brought her home. And that's a very tragic disease. And when the women mm -hmm. have that type of disease, because the, chem the, the, the therapy they get, they, they, they're, they're, and I want to be respectful of what I'm about to say, is that mm -hmm. when, the, when the blood comes out, it comes out like coffee grinders because of the, you know, the, the therapy. And I took care of her. This is she took care of me. And I'm glad on this station here, the women and the people, the program they have on here about the female women. And if the men would just understand what their body go through with mine. And I want to include this, Cal. Last night, which your cousin talked about, I'm going to go up there and talk to her about, about Valera about the, the brains and talk mm -hmm. about, she talked about, um, uh, I, I, my, my cup running over, excuse me. And she talked no, about, no. I want to talk to her about Dr. Jonah Salt. I couldn't get in last night to talk about that because okay. Dr. Jonah Salt was the one that found the cure, the vaccine. Thank you for coming to my mind. The vaccine that we have President Roosevelt, he had and many other people had that disease called polio at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, I do. It's a, it's a very essential thing. And let me say this, one out of all the gifts that you can give and the medical teams can give, take your family, if you have family or someone in your family, let your healing hands, and even the doctors are saying these words, said, I've done all I can, can do. Where's mm -hmm. your faith? Go back to faith. And that's the time that faith kick in with the almighty God. And I'm glad that the technology that we have today have advanced itself. And what your cousin said last night, and you, Dr. On there, the sensitivity with the patients, that's very important. That is the mm -hmm. beginning of the of hopefully giving that person what's going through something to recover much better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. I can't. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm saying thank you on behalf of you, Dr. Bailey, but thank you also for joining the conversation to say that because he's so right. You know, I mean, I'm as a caregiver myself, I, I was so grateful. I mean, I, I wrote thank you letters to all of my parents, physicians, but but there were out of the physicians that cared for them. There was always one for both because my both of my parents had different, you know, physicians, but there was always one. Out of, out of their their care, uh, their doctors that cared the most that, you know, you could tell this is what they love to do. And it was about the person and not about not so as much about the medicine. So yeah. I thank you be, because your explanation of that, even offline when, you know, your explanation of that, that, that was what I received from you. I, I don't. um Actually, you know what? Let's go back to the phone because I know we have another caller on the line. Are you still there with us? Yes, I am. Is this Cheryl? Yes, it is. 
<laughs> Hi, Cheryl. How are you? How are you? Hi, Mia. Hi. You know what? I'm telling you, that smile on your face. Oh. Let me tell you something. Because when I went through my cancer, right, it was hard, hard to hear when they first told me. But after I went through and I said, listen, I got places to go, things to do and people to see. I had to take care of a totally disabled daughter. And I had a great uncle that I was taking care of who was suffering with the, uh, dementia. Then it turned to Alzheimer. When I tell you I had to go through all of that and just me and my husband had to work and it was just me. Wow. I, mm, 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 I kick cancers behind. But, okay. but, but one thing I want yes. to say is... You didn't mention, or are you going to mention that once you get that radiating, wait a minute, after, after the uh, fifth week of yes. me being burned to a crisp, I couldn't take it not, not, not a second longer. And so mm -hmm. the doctor said to me, can I give you two weeks so you can just like rest yes. and then will you come back to finish it? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I can do that. And I did it. And so it was okay, but I was crispy charred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stick a fork Ooh. in <laughs> Wait, I, oh Cheryl, I'm 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 sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I'm so interested in knowing. So, uh -huh. were you in pain during during that time? It wasn't pain for the radiation, but the after I got burnt, mm -hmm. you couldn't touch me. I couldn't put a I couldn't put a bra on. I couldn't put a shirt on. That's how uh, that's how burnt I was. And he said, mm -hmm. most people go through that. And I said, well, this is what they had to go through. I would have opted out of this. But mm -hmm. it wasn't no pain as getting the radiation. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But after mm -hmm. after effect, mm -hmm. it burnt me. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. And, and this is seven years in. And I'm just, I really not even came back to my skin color. It almost, it looks like I have a tan on that side. Uh -huh. Yeah. I was going to ask you. The, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about the recovery. How long, you said? Wow, you said after seven yeah. years, it, it still look, looks like you have a tan. Is, is there yeah, sensitivity the in the area? Is there any uh, sensitivity? Nope, none. No sensitivity at all. I don't have any of that. But I can tell you one thing, uh, Doctor Nia. Can you vouch for this? Yes, and that breast that you have the cancer in, it shrinks by you get. I don't know if it's because of the radiation or it's the chemo. Which yes, one does it? Radiation the breast will shrink. Yes, ma'am. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I got one big one, one little one, but I have a prostate oh, the... or, or, or oh, whatever. Uh, you know, they give you the little. <laughs> oh my, so is it like padding? They give. I feel is... so true. <laughs> no, 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 I, no. You know what? I can't thank you enough because helpful. I was. I'm, I'm. I'm telling you, it is so helpful to me. I have two cousins, both named Karen, Karen Riddick and Karen Allen, both passed away from breast cancer, mm -hmm. and I say I'm. So, I, I'm telling you that I. I. I'm mad at myself because I'm so negligent. I. I do not know. Mm -hmm. I do not know enough about breast cancer. So this is helpful to me to know your journey. And so I'm so grateful for your transparency. Well, thank it, you. And my mom had it two years in a row, back to back. And this is within two years now. Wow. It came back. She got, it was stage one, like very minute in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then the next year it came back, it came back with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. where they, thought they was going to have to give her a mastectomy. But praise God, you know what? She got a second opinion. They went back in there and said, it's not that big. We don't have to take oh. both your breasts. And mm. all she had was a, uh, maybe a two treatments of chemo and um, a couple of treatments of radiation. She's good. She's oh, so good. Praise God. Mm. Praise God. And, and, I, and I'm thinking, Dr. you say, I love your smile. I would have took you any day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I'm, you know, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, but you are a thriver, and just your story mm -hmm. is a testimony for women who have received treatment or going through treatment, or people who have not. I mean, wow, you are phenomenal. You're well, thank you. Thank oh, my you. oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! You keep doing Truly. a great job. You keep doing what you're doing. I love it. And Carol, this is my first time calling this show, but you know, I, I'm going to be watching you every okay. night. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, you may think yes. Thank you. God bless you. You're welcome. I'm so Go glad. Ahead. Thank you. You too, Cheryl. 
Oh my goodness. Family, listen, look, if you have just joined us, you are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We're talking about everything. Now, you know, here at Love and Life, it's about transparency. It's about life. It's about the love of yourself. It's about, we, we talk about everything here. And, and when I tell you, I tell you in full transparency because, I mean, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. So I believe that communication helps us all. So I can't thank you, Cheryl, enough for sharing with us because, like I said, I, I, I want to know. I want to know. And I feel like if I'm helping to educate myself, I feel like we're all helping to educate each other. And I love that because that's community. And that's that's I live for that. I live for community. But Dr. Bailey, um, oh my goodness. So when you uh, I, have, I, I tell you, I have so many questions. So we're ta OK, we're, we're talking about breast cancer because I know this is your field of expertise. I want to get to all of your accomplishments and everything. I want to get to all of that, but I want to know. I, I I want no no no. I want I want our family to know more about you too. But I want to know. So when we talk about the stages mm -hmm. of breast cancer, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. When a woman is diagnosed and she's told she has stage two. What does that mean? What do, what does that mean? What does that look like? What does that mean? Absolutely. So can I just bring it back a little bit? So if yes. women receive genetic testing and that genetic okay. testing states that they have a gene that we may have heard of BRCA1 or BRCA2, which means that increases your chance of being diagnosed with breast cancer, they can go ahead and get a mastectomy. They can handle that. The lowest is what we call um, kind of, it's they call zero. There's a stage zero where uh -oh. it looks like some type of disease that's there, but they want to go ahead and get it before it goes to stage one to four. So oh. it just looks something there. Stage one is a tiny lump. It's still in the breast tissue. Okay. Stage two is coming out the breast tissue. Stage three, it's in the lymph nodes. So you have lymph nodes under here. It's in the lymph mm -hmm. nodes. And stage four, it can be throughout your body. It can be in your brain, your liver, your lung, throughout your body. So that's why um, stage four is, um, I'm going to phrase it, it has a, um, a worse prognosis or um, a worse chance of survival compared okay. to the lower stage because the lower stage, it's still confined in that breast tissue okay. um, and then stage four, you go throughout, throughout your body. But I do want to mention real quick, men also get breast cancer too. Mm -hmm. So they don't have, um, typically they don't have kind of uh, fatty, more fatty tissue than women do, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing and the stages are still the same. Well, so now I, one other thing too, I'm going to tell you when the, when the doctor told me this, I was blown away. We were, we're taught as young women to do breast exams. Mm -hmm. I had no idea everything under, I, I had no idea. For those of you who, who cannot see me or are, are just listening, I'm raising my arm, but I'm I'm reaching under, like next to what would be my, my breast, but raised under my arm and all, I had no idea I was supposed to be checking. Mm -hmm. I, I did, I had for years, yes, I had no idea yes, I was supposed to check there because I mean, no one ever tells you Mm -hmm. how to do a proper breast exam. Absolutely. And it didn't happen for me until I was well into my adult life. Okay. The doctor, she actually asked me and I said, well, I, well, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say no, because you're asking me. Right. So no, I don't know how to do a proper ex breast exam. And then she demonstrated. And like I said, I was blown away because I had no idea that was considered breast tissue. Yes. Uh-huh. It's called the tail of Spence and it's just a tail. And so you want to get all under your underarm, your axilla area. You want to get underneath. You want to feel all that. And you want to look at it, too, because typically, and maybe it's just my breast, but typically <laughs> one's bigger than the other a little bit. But you would really want to look at the size. Is it dramatically bigger than the other? Mm -hmm. You want to look at your nipple. Is it inverted? That's not good. It's not supposed to be inverted. Your nipple should be pointed outward, right? You want to see if there's some discharge around there. Because it should not, nothing should be leaking out of your breast unless you're breastfeeding. But still, you still want to check that out. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you want to see if kind of like an orange around your areola, you want to see if that's kind of dimpling. Okay. It's not supposed to be dimpling like that. Kind of like the orange, you know, how orange is kind of dimpling. Yes. Yes. You want to see that it's not supposed to be dimpling. So things like that. And you want to feel, does it hurt? Is it heavy? You know, sometimes around your cycle gets heavy, but note that, you know, I know how my body feels around my cycle. So if around my cycle, it's a little heavier, hmm, maybe Mm -hmm. I need to pay attention to that or not, you know, just, or when you're off your cycle and it feels heavy, pay attention to that. All those things that you need to feel feel and then look for because those are all could be indicators of a breast cancer diagnosis. You know, one thing you just said, um, well, actually, what we're going to do is take a commercial break. But when we come back, I want to talk about a st- something you just said when you were talking about doing um, a breast exam family. Um, stay with us, please, because we will be right back. <laughs> Can we do this without a lawyer? I don't see how we have to straighten out the deed and probate the estate. Only then can we refinance the mortgage and apply for one of them home improvement grants. But I'm her daughter. Can I call the city, the bank, or whoever? Yeah, you're the daughter, sure. But your mom never made a will. She never named you an heir or executor because she never made a will. So what are we gonna do? Are you living in a home in the name of a deceased person? We can help. I'm Tracy Gordon. Register your wills. We are waiving and deferring fees associated with tenure titles. Email rogue.pdi at philo.gov to be put in contact with free legal assistance. Find out if you are eligible for the new probate deferment initiative by the Philadelphia Register of Wills. This is the story of a very special woman. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was limitless and still is. She could also make monsters disappear especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces, just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now. And AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Need a minute? Take a breath and breathe in positivity. Here are words of joy and empowerment from Word Radio. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes time. But vision with action can change the world. These are the words of Joel Arthur Barker. And my prayer and hope for Philadelphia, a city I was born in, educated, lived, and work in, will collectively come together to help its citizens by bringing economic prosperity to those in need, create safe and affordable housing for the disenfranchised, and create safe and organic spaces for adults and children to grow. I am Kimberly Lloyd. This joy and empowerment vignette was brought to you by Comcast. What is love? You're listening to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. I think I know. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. We're talking with Dr. Nia Imani Bailey, who is sharing all kinds of pearls of wisdom with us. And I was saying before the commercial break, you talked about one thing you said, it really resonated with me because for the longest time, I, w- I was so uncomfortable with my body. I was uncomfortable giving myself a breast exam. I just didn't. Well, number one, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was supposed to be looking for. I didn't even know the area, the proper area I was supposed to cover. But I certainly didn't want to look at me 
You know, you, we all have shortcomings and we all feel like, oh, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. But it's so important that you do. It's so important that you know you, that you know your body, that you become familiar, good, bad or indifferent. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's who we are. It's who you are. And and when you said that, I felt like you were talking to me. I really did. I said, oh, why is she telling about this? Because, <laughs> no, I, for the longest time, I just really was so uncomfortable. I understand. I understand. It, but you're, you know, number one, you're beautiful. Number oh, two, God. you know what happens? Sometimes the spouse, the partner notices sometimes more than the actual person. So if, you know, um, I don't know. You just see your spouse, your partner, and they say, huh, that's different, you know, because maybe you don't notice it yourself, but the spouse or partner notices. And sometimes that um, what makes patients go see the doctor for whatever reason, you know, for uh, to check if they have an issue. So I want you to be comfortable looking at yourself. That goes for anybody. We're all different shapes, sizes. We're all beautiful. But sometimes the partner actually notices first. I was going to ask. I'm glad you said that, too, because what um, what what do we what are the symptoms? I should say, what, what should we look out for? For I know uh, the, the one thing I know are lumps. I know that or, and, and what you were just describing, but are there other things? What other things? I had a lovely woman by the name of love. That was her name, love Congo. And she said she had a pain in her arm, under her arm, under her axilla, under her underarm. Okay. And that was a red flag for her. And Doctors were saying, that's nothing, that's nothing. It turned out to be breast cancer. So, and what happened was it went outside of the breast tissue and okay. it was in her lymph nodes. So, and that particular lymph node was painful for her. So to answer your question, I don't know if there's a standard answer. It's whatever your body is telling you, hey, this hurts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because some women find out their disease when it's stage four. So maybe their back hurts. Hmm. That hurts. It turns out to be breast cancer, but it had spread. I don't want to say to a woman or a man, it's just lumps. It mm -hmm. just this. I don't want to say that because I don't want them to neglect something else that could be the problem and that can lead them to the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say what listen to your body and whatever sort of ails you, aches you, seek help. Address it. Yeah. 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 I know that history, I know I have fibrocystic breasts, which just means my breasts feel lumpy. Uh. I, knew, I knew that because it's genetic. My mother has that. So when I go to my doctor, I said, can you feel, because this feels new. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they normally, they say, Nia, I think you're okay. But guess what? They set me up with an ultrasound just to make sure I get an ultrasound of both breasts. And guess what they say to me? Nia, you have dense breasts. Well, let me tell you what dense breast means. It means when the radiographer pulls up my image of my breast, it looks cloudy. He can't say anything. Or she, excuse me, can't say anything. So you know what I say? I say, okay, well, I need a 3D mammogram. Now I'm 30 years old. And I said this at 28. I said, I need a 3D mammogram. They said, you're too young. I said, I need a 3D mammogram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got a 3D mammogram. And guess what it said? You have dense breasts. I said, I need a breast MRI. He said, you know what, Nia? The insurance is not going to cover it. I said, let me tell you something. When you tell me I have dense breast, that means you can't see anything accurately. Right. And I have a family cancer history of cancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They put that in information in a risk calculator, determine I have high risk for breast cancer. And guess what, Nia got? A breast MRI. Mm -hmm. I received the breast MRI and everything was perfect. They did not tell me I had dense breasts. They were able to say, hey, we do not see anything. Mm. And guess what? From there, every year now, I get a 3D mammogram and alternate with a breast MRI starting at the age of 28. And I'm now 30. I see. You just taught me something else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, that Wow. That's really interesting. So what what a man, well, how, well, you know what? That's another question I have because I know we, we to go to get our mammograms, how would a man be tested for breast cancer? Ultrasound, MRI, there's other things. Some, uh -huh. and I don't mean this, um, I mean this very honestly, some men do have, you know, dense or breast tissue, or breast tissue, right. And they can get, receive a mammogram, but there's ultrasound, there's other modalities mm -hmm. that could, um, 
determine or decipher if a man has breast cancer or not, but it's always, I say this to say, it's very important to advocate for yourself. And if you don't know what, what does dense mean? Ask the provider to explain that to you. And they're going to explain to you, well, we're not a hundred percent sure that what we see, there's nothing there. Well, Hmm. then I need for another modality to happen for you to determine if I, you know, I have something or not. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I need a I need a definite response yeah. to my question. Yeah, I because that is so general. That well, it's not general. It's you. It's non. It's non informative. If <laughs> you're telling me I have dense breast, yeah. Okay, so let's let's find out what's going on. Yes, and let's, that's why let's... it's also. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, and I... that's why it's also important to know your family cancer history, right? Because that definitely helped in my advocacy, because I was able to say my father had prostate cancer. My mom's brothers had prostate cancer. Everybody in my family had multiple. My lung, my lung cancer, this, that, the third. So I was able to bring that to my doctor, whether my primary care, my GYN, my family physician, and they can then help me with that information. That's important that you said that. So it doesn't matter what type of cancer. Mm -hmm. It just, it it just, that the cancer itself, uh, that another family member had cancer. And is it an immediate family member or? Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. So um, it would be my father, my mother, uh, my siblings, aunts and uncles. Okay. I, you know, to, I personally, I think if I have a fifth cousin with cancer, I still think sometimes the blood is in me, but um, mm-hmm. medically they won't count that fifth, third cousin. Understood. Understood. Mm-hmm. But no, that makes so much sense to me. I mean, I would too. I would do the same thing. We share the same bloodline. So yeah. let me get, let me get tested too. Let me get checked and see what's going on in here. I, family, uh, I am so glad that you all are participating in the conversation. I, I really cannot express to you how much it means to me because, you know, I want to make sure that we're all educated and informed and all of that good stuff. Cause you know, communication is big. It's key. It's key. If you would like to call us, you can do so by dialing 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. What, there is so much more to Dr. Bailey than you know. I alluded to the documentary that you, if I'm not mistaken, you wrote, That's directed. Yeah. I, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I know, and I feel so badly because I've, I've, you know, ask you so many questions in this one hour. We're going to have this this remaining uh, hour after we come back from our commercial break to talk about, you know, this good work that you're doing. Um, the one thing I want to ask you in your life's mission, I love that you 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 wrote that that it's your life's mission to educate us and to help us with um, resources about breast cancer. Is your focus on Young women, or is it on just women overall? You know, women of every age. Documentary, it says young women, but it's women overall. It's men too. Okay, I was going to ask if men are included. I I just want to educate everybody because that's important. You know, it is. It 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 is. And this this topic here is one that we don't talk about enough. We really, you know, like I said, um, I have some family members, some cousins of mine who both had breast cancer, but it's still a conversation that we've not had in my family. And I'm thinking, okay, we need to talk about this. We definitely need to talk about this because it's so important. It's so important. So you, what sparked from, where did the idea come to do a documentary? Oh my goodness. So I met this one girl, I treated her. She was 24 years old. She had box braids like me. We both had a gold <laughs> anklet. <laughs> we both loved the rapper, Meek Mill. You know, I, I saw myself in her. Okay. <laughs> and um, she had two children. I don't have children yet, but I just we just vibed, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Her. And she passed up triple negative breast cancer. So that's what kind of started the um, documentary process. Nice. Family, when we come back, we're going to talk more about Dr. Bailey's documentary and some other things. Okay, so stay with us because we're just going to take a short break. We'll be right back. (laughs) Word Radio Digital Tip of the Month with Stephanie Humphrey. Brought to you by Comcast. 
As the weather gets warmer and pandemic numbers stay low, we can expect travel to be on everyone's must-do list this year. So if you are heading out of town, think about saving these things on your smartphone for safekeeping. Take pictures of your passport, driver's license, or other identification. Make sure you have digital copies of your itinerary, tickets, and reservation numbers. A photo of your credit cards and bank cards could also come in handy if your wallet is lost or stolen. Membership numbers for things like AAA and photos of your medications are also a good thing to have on hand. You can take photos of all this information and easily store it in a locked note on your smartphone or in an online folder on a service like Dropbox. But whatever you do, make sure you have all your important info stored somewhere safe before you hit the road. Stay tuned to WURD for more tips and stay connected with us at wordradio.com. Life had a remote control. You could pause or rewind. <laughs> well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but prediabetes does. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Stay connected on the go with the new and improved Word Radio app. Search Word Radio in your app store. Stream every show with increased clarity. Easily access Word TV, EcoWord, and Livelihood. Start or redo your four-word membership and buy Word swag. Remember, Black Media Matters. Get the new and improved Word Radio app today. Available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media. We're bringing joy and power to the people. This is WURD, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, Philadelphia. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Black Talk Talk Media. Media. Hey there, family. Welcome to the top of the second hour of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. We've been talking with Dr. Bailey, Dr. Nia Imani Bailey, to be exact, who is a radiation therapist. She wrote a documentary that I really, really, really want to share with you all. I would really like for you to know about. But I asked before the break, um, from where did you get the inspiration? I'd love for you to repeat that so our family members will know. From where did you get the inspiration to write and direct, no less, this documentary? Um, There was this beautiful, beautiful African-American woman. She, 24 years old, had box braids, gold anklet. We both like rap, meet and build. And um, she passed away of triple negative breast cancer. So that automatically I said, hold on, you're 24 years old and you're not here anymore. What's happening? And I noticed a lot of young women being, you know, being treated for uh, radiation. One woman, her name was uh, Kawani Lopez. Super funny, super funny. And she sat me in the hallway and she showed me a picture of what she used to look like. And she said, I'm having a hard time coping with the fact that I will never look like this again. And she passed away from Mm. cancer too. So I said to myself, this information needs to get out there because the earlier you catch it, you have a better chance of living. You have a better prognosis. And Mm -hmm. I said, although I got my doctorate, I said, if I read one more book, I said, if I listen to one more lecture, how about a documentary? How about a movie? Mm -hmm. And I was kind of toying with it. I told God, I don't have time. And God said, okay, you have time. So I got hip surgery. And he said, okay, so what you going to (laughs) do? So I guess I had to be obedient. Okay. So, okay, okay. <laughs> so I wrote it. I asked these three phenomenal women to be in it. They were my patients. But during that time, we became friends. Wow. Um, my friend, Najee Grant, he um, is a humanitarian author. He has a storefront in Ardmore, PA called Daydream Creative Studio. So we filmed it there. Nice. The videographer Judy Smith Bogat, she did it, and she was she's on ESPN and 
all this other thing. So she helped film it and uh, edit it. One of my best friends, Tatiana, because one of the women speaks Spanish. She flew in from California to um, do that interview because I know hola and como esta. I don't know more than that. Exactly. <laughs> so she did that for me. And so let me just tell you about the women. They're phenomenal. The one woman, her name is Janique Rivera. She is Jamaican, Asian, and Puerto Rican, all three, mixed into a beautiful woman. And she was diagnosed in her 20s with triple negative breast cancer. So she tells her story of fight and advocacy. The second woman, Brenda Durantes, she's mm-hmm. Mexican. She was diagnosed in her 30s. And her um, interview is in Spanish, but we have English subtitles. Because I wanted her to feel comfortable in her native language. Sure. And the last woman, Lynn Mitchell, diagnosed in her 40s. And she is Caucasian. So I really wanted to show everyone. It doesn't matter what you look like, your age, your language. Mm -hmm. This is very important to talk about. And, you know, you just learn about their stories, but you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. So after seeing the film, you say, should I get a mammogram? Should I um, meet with a genetic counselor? Do I need genetic testing? Family cancer history. It's so many things that you sort of receive that information so, and that's what I wanted. And then we also highlight prevention as well, because there's ways that you can prevent a little bit your breast okay. like breastfeeding. So if you are in the breastfeeding range and you're caring, mm-hmm. the idea is that you breastfeed for at least a year. No pressure. I know my mom said, if I breastfed you and your brother one more time, I was over it. So no mm-hmm. pressure. But as long, but as long as you can, okay? she said no. She said, she said, "Listen, y'all was hungry at the same time." That's important. Reducing your sugary and alcoholic intake that also decreases the risk okay. because sugar feeds on cancer. So I love some lemonade, but I can't have it all the time. Mm. Alcohol. We're in this generation of getting lit, but that increases the risk of breast cancer and other issues as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The exercise that decreases your risk, eating nutritious foods. We talked about pretzels and cheese steaks. Mm. It's important on your plate that it looks colorful. Mm. So my mom has a business called Meal, More Than um, More Than Kale Meal Prep and Catering, and she said, "If you have another cheese steak, I'm gonna need for you to get some kale that I'm making." <laughs> <laughs> Not smoking, hookah, cigarettes, vape. Do not smoke none of them. We no, mm-mm, because all those increase your risk and achieving a healthy body weight for yourself. Uh-huh. All those things lowers your risk just a little bit of being diagnosed with breast cancer. So all those things are, you know, kind of highlighted. Well, when you say that um, about ca- uh, prevention, does it help to prevent cancer of any kind or just specifically as it pertains to breast cancer? Any kind. Any kind. And also other things as well, diabetes, yeah, attention, things like that. You know, it's very important for balance. So I'm not saying you got to eat air and a leaf all the time, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. but balance more of the healthy things, you know, it's very important. More of that. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the documentary that you created, how long is it? How long is the documentary? Five zero minutes. Okay. And I also highlight my friend who passed away of breast cancer and um, beautiful woman. Go ahead. No, you know what? I'm sorry. When you said that your friend, you said a double negative, double, uh, triple negative. What does that mean? So breast cancer always has um, an estrogen receptor, progesterone and a protein HER2. Triple negative has none of those three characteristics. That's where the name triple negative comes from. And typically when a woman is diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, it's more aggressive and it's advanced. Right now, um, researchers are trying to find a way how to treat it, but it's kind of hard to treat. Go ahead. No, I'm so sorry. So does that, can, that, that, is that in correlation to the stage of cancer? Or- typically, so when a woman typically gets diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, it's usually in the three or fours compared mm-hmm. to the one, two. Um, and who gets triple negative breast cancer? African Americans, women who are 40 years younger or have a BRCA mutation. Um, and they're trying to figure out how to treat it because, like I said, it, it's advanced and they don't know why. 
and so my friend was diagnosed with that and I pay tribute to her in the documentary. So is breast cancer more, is it seen more in black women or black and brown women, or is there a statistic on that? So black, Asian, Puerto Rican, Caucasian okay. women can all get breast cancer, yes. but typically triple negative breast cancer affects African-American women more. Really? And they don't know why. They're trying to research, is it genetic? And I mean genetic, back to the motherland genetic. There's a doctor by the name of Lisa Newman, and she's trying to research, depending on where we came from, Ghana and Nigeria, mm -hmm. does that increase our risk of getting breast cancer? But guess what? We call ourselves typically African-American. I don't know where I'm from. Now, from my gene genealogy and research, I think I'm from Ethiopia, but who knows if that's true? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm that sort of, you know, DNA sort of increases our risk where we live, the environment that increases our risk. And actually mm. binge drinking, they find and African Americans, we typically binge drink and that increases our risk. So having more drinks in a short amount of time, that, what? Increases, that increases the risk of breast cancer. So they're doing more research on that. You know, I'm some, sometimes I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know, I, I, <laughs> I could have something to add to this conversation that probably wouldn't be favorable to like. Right. <laughs> you listen. You know, I, oh, I always believe. I always, I, you know, I always believe that there is a, there's a, um, what, do, how do I put it? There's a, um, there's a plan <laughs> that that you know is constantly being carried out. I, I, I truly do believe that that we've we've been targeted. <laughs> for the longest. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have a question from Cheryl, our friend Cheryl, Dr. Bailey. Can you speak about women who cannot have hormone replacement therapy? Thank you for that. That's a good point. You know, I'm not too well versed on that, so I don't want to speak on that. Mm -hmm. um, but what is your question in regards to hormone therapy? Like, is there something, is another treatment that are you asking me if there's another treatment that they can receive or well you know what while uh we wait for cheryl to respond to that question we do have um another caller on the line rick are you still there with us yes ma'am i'm here good evening how are you today everything hurts but i'm i'm, I'm in a good enough mood to be positive in this conversation Mm, I'm so sorry to hear that you're in pain. Um, I would first like to say that I heard your guest. Who is your Who is your guest tonight? Our guest tonight is Doctor Nia Imani Bailey. Miss Doctor Doctor Bailey, um, I heard you say earlier that sugar feeds on cancer. And I, I suspect that you meant to say cancer feeds on sugar. Yes, sir. Thank you for that um, question. Um, second, I, I skipped out on the conversation a couple of times while cooking and using the restroom. But I want to know if you have discussed American produce, produced chicken and its mm. relation to breast cancer in all parts of the population. I have not, but that's a good point, sir. Yes. That's a good introduction to this conversation uh -huh. um, because I was saying, I don't know if you heard me say, Rick, I, I, I constantly, at, at times I'm a conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. and I do believe, I always believe there's a plan at play and it, it, it's been in play for forever forever we've been targeted at least at, at least since the 1930s oh at least oh definitely at least at least um i i, I would say in closing that uh the way chickens are mass produced there in america mm -hmm. it's not good for anybody mm -hmm. and we have been dying since the 1970s mm -hmm. slowly but surely and increasingly since the 1990s and if it isn't obvious to us now what's going on with the chicken 
it'll never be obvious to us what's going on with the pork and mm-hmm. the beef mm. and so forth and so on. Absolutely. You know, that was a, that statement right there. Um, a friend of mine told me in the more recent past about chicken. I, I don't eat a lot of it, but I'm, I'm a, I don't eat a lot of it, but he did tell me, he said the same thing, the exact same thing that you're, that you're saying right now, Rick. And he was talking about a documentary that he watched that breaks it down about chicken and about, um, about the mass production of it and how it's not good. He t- So what he did say to me is that if I see this documentary and he just said this to me in the more recent past, if I see this documentary that I will never want to eat chicken again. Wow. That is what, that's exactly what he said to me. Wow. Rick, I, I want to thank you for um, always piquing, especially my interest, but piquing our interest mm-hmm. when I, our, I um, appreciate all of our callers, yeah. but I so appreciate the addition to the conversation that you bring. I appreciate the knowledge and the, the education, because as you know, I say it's about communication. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Rick. I, I want to um, circle back to Cheryl. The question that Cheryl had was a, a, about speaking about hormone replacement therapy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, she states that she was told that it can cause cancer to appear somewhere else in the body. So it was mm-hmm. recommended to her that she did not take it. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before. You know, I've even heard um, I've heard that before. I've heard like birth control causes cancer, you know, and that's hormones in your body. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of things, you know, sorry, go ahead. And I'm sorry, I keep doing that, but I, I, the things keep coming to me. The can't, for, for our family members who are unaware, what is hormone replacement therapy? What does that entail? What is it? So when you have, um, how do I explain this? lack thereof of hormones Mm -hmm. that gets placed in your body. So hormone replacement, you get that in your body because you need some type of balance of hormones, right? But that can increase your risk. So this would be a point. I'm sorry. This would be synthetic. This is a synthetic hormone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a a synthetic hormone would be um, administered. Correct. Yes, ma'am. To your body. Yes, ma'am. And 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 it has been known, or or there's some experience mm-hmm. um, with it causing cancer to appear elsewhere in the body. So mm-hmm. it metastasizes. Is that what it does? Or or it could be that primary site. So it you know uh-huh. it, it could be anywhere. It could show up anywhere. So that's very true. And I just want to say to your point of when you said conspiracy theory, that's why a lot of African Americans in general don't enroll in clinical trials. Oh, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because like you said, you know, I don't want to be a guinea pig. You think of the Tuskegee experiment. Uh, yeah. You think of Henrietta Lex and how her yes. cells were taken for, from her without um, her knowledge. But My that, first thought is always Henrietta Lex. I'm sorry. That, when we talk about medical, <laughs> we talk about anything. I'm so sorry. Listen, when we, whenever we talk about medical, Henrietta Lex yes. is my first thought. Yes. When I think about um, how our bodies react to the different things that uh, um, that are, the, well, the different medicines that are administered to us, mm-hmm. the foods that we eat, this conversation about chicken, when I think about all of that, and I talk about the plan being in play, that is to what, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, that is about which, which I speak. Right. I know. totally get it. But that's also hurting us as well, because Triple and so back to triple negative breast cancer, they don't know how to treat it in us because um, we aren't in clinical trials. So, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, when HIV and AIDS hit uh, in the 80s, right, all of us were passing away. Everybody sort of enrolled in clinical trials unbeknownst to them. Or, you know, they said, here, take my blood because I want you to save me. And now, no matter the race, and, you know, I'm not well too versed on the statistics, but you can live with HIV and AIDS, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tylenol, there had to be a clinical trial for Tylenol. And we all take Tylenol when we have headaches and things like that, right? So the same thing in terms of cancer or breast cancer, 
we have to, and I know like you're going to be like this. We have to yeah. give our tissue and our blood so that they know how to treat the cancer that's within us. If we don't, we'll always be in that same predicament of we're passing away from it. No, this is important because we're talking about education. We're talking about communication and family. Like you, I tell you all the time, I'm transparent. I don't have any problem, you know, letting you know my fears. And it has, it has always been a fear of mine. And I know that, you know, from family, it's been passed on, you know, um, this is what I'd like to believe a little bit of learned behavior and a little bit of just observation in some areas, you know, with other things that I've just applied to this, but I mean, but the need for um, th for us to be educated is there. I want to say hello to our family members who are joining us on our socials. Lily, Lily says, good evening. Uh -oh. Chloe has joined the conversation. She's upset about something. Is she little? But is she, yes, she is <laughs> my fur child. But Lily, Lily says, good evening. Um, Kia says, yes, Kia says it's so important that we educate ourselves on the need for more clinical trial participation to find more accurate cures for us. You couldn't be more right. You couldn't be more right. I, you are so, so right about it. And, and again, it's my fear. It, it's my fear of, 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 be, of being that Guinea pig. Um, you know, I have no, no problem saying that I'm working on it, but it is definitely a huge fear. Um, Cheryl states that they wanted, uh, the doctors wanted her to take, um tamoxifen for five yes. years yes uh-huh she said she did for two years um but the side effect for her was her bones starting to hurt mm -hmm. yeah so they asked if she wanted to take a new trial drug that was coming out and she okay. she declined uh -huh. and there's nothing wrong that you know i never want to say well you didn't enroll in that clinical trial it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is your decision it's very easy for me to say enroll 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 do 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 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Imani Bailey gets diagnosed with breast cancer. You might look at me and say, "Well, Nia, didn't you tell me?" I don't know. It's individualized, and it's okay with whatever you choose. I'm just only here to say, "Hey, if that's what you want to choose, please do so." You no, know? and you, and I so appreciate you. I, I at no time want you to not. You know, I don't want you to ever feel or believe that I do not, <laughs> because I invited you to come and talk with us and educate us about what you do and, mm -hmm. and, and the boat breast cancer and your research yes, and, and, and being a radiation therapist. Like I said, I have no clue what, you know, what a day in your life entails. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine, uh, you know, being, because you, you work in the health profession. So you're a caregiver yes, by nature and profession and, and just knowing, you know, having to care for a loved one on my end, mm -hmm. it's, that's yeah. a lot. It's taxing. Mm -hmm. It's very taxing and it's emotional stress. Mm -hmm. It's emotional when you're watching someone's body break down. Absolutely. You, you, that's difficult when you're doing all that you can or all that you know to do. Absolutely. But you're still, you know, watching deterioration of some degree. Absolutely. And then talking about side effects and the after effects Absolutely. of, 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 um, some of the medical experiences, you know, patients have, it, it, it's, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. So let me ask you this, the, the, um, when you, you say that you meet a lot of people and you develop these friendships and relationships with the patients, mm -hmm. which I think is, is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Do do they, I can, first of all, I can't imagine. I, I cannot imagine mm -hmm. like it, what does a day for you look like? Because it, it, what does a day look like? Yeah, so I, I get to work around 6, 15 a.m. Okay. I warm up the machine, the linear accelerator, which emits, which gives the radiation. Mm -hmm. So I always do quality assurance tests to make sure that the radiation is um, accurate and emits what it needs to. Mm -hmm. And then the first patient comes in and it can be the site of a breast, prostate, brain, um, bony anatomy, just mm -hmm. anything. Um, and we typically have patients every 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Um, yes, ma'am. And, you know, I'll go from 7 a.m. The first patient comes in to around 3 p.m. And we are met with just some amazing people who smile, tell us stories, you know, and it's so cool because 
nine times out of ten, I always remember what they said to me the next day. So I'm saying, oh, so and so, how was the basketball game, or how mm-hmm. was your sports recital, and things like that. And it really helps because one thing my father said, and you sort of you said this too, you're treating the person and the disease. Mm-hmm. So father being treated on the table, they also understand we care about them. Mm-hmm. We're trying to heal their disease, but we care about them. And, you know, a lot of people say at the end of their treatment, I'm so sad to leave. And it's not that they want to continue their cancer treatment, but we really create a bond. <laughs> and it's absolutely beautiful. I really thought a session would be longer. You said like patients come in about every 15 minutes. No, it depends on the site, but typically it only takes 15 minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other, so what I'm treating on is a linear accelerator external beam. So um, that typically takes 15 minutes. There's other modalities such as cyber knife, which emits um, higher radiation and that could take an hour. Um, So there's different types of radiation and depending on where the body is, but the machine that I'm on, it takes 15 minutes or less. Okay. Wow. My goodness. Family, um, you already know. We're going to take a short break, but stay with us uh, because when we come back, I'm going to ask Dr. Bailey, I'm going to ask her now and give her a chance to think about it, <laughs> if she can talk with us about one of her the more extreme cases that you've had. Um, but stay with us, family, okay, because we're continuing the conversation and we'll be right back. The Museum of the American Revolution invites you and your family to experience Black Founders, the Fortson family of Philadelphia, now on display. Explore the story of free Black Philadelphian James Fortson and his descendants as they navigate the Revolutionary War, build a business in Philadelphia, and contribute to the abolition and voting rights movements. The unique journey and exceptional story of the Fortson family explores the legacy of the American Revolution and the ongoing work to realize the principle of liberty and equality for all. Information and tickets at amrevmuseum.org. This WURD public service announcement is a reminder that every voice and every vote counts. We are committed to keeping you informed and we encourage you to participate in the process. This is Charles Ellison, host of Reality Check on WURD. So with all this talk about vote by mail, you're probably wondering, will my ballot be counted? No worries. 40 states, including Pennsylvania, are tracking mail-in ballots. Simply go to votespa.com and click on mail-in and absentee ballot to find out if your ballot was received. Or go more directly to pavoterservices.pa.gov and click on election ballot status to enter your name, birth date, and county. Keep following us at at on word on Twitter, facebook.com slash four word and hashtag word on politics for constant updates. This BSA is a part of Every Voice, Every Vote a collaborative project of the Lenfest Institute for Journalism with lead support provided by the William Penn Foundation. Learn more at www.everyvoice-everyvote.org. Editorial content is created independently of the project's donors. Black Media Matters and Black Media will be heard. On Thursday, April 13th at 7 p.m., hear from Philadelphia mayoral candidates on issues that matter to our community. Safety education, the economy, and more. WURD's Solomon Jones will be joined by journalists from the Philadelphia Tribune, the Sunday Sun, and Fun Times Magazine for a discussion with the candidates, moderated by Andrea Lawful Sanders. This forum takes place at Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church, 2800 West Sheltonham Avenue. To attend, go to wordradio.com and click the Black Media Matters banner to register. Or tune in live Thursday, April 13th at 7 p.m. or 900 a.m., 96.1 FM, wordradio.com, and the Word Radio app. This event is part of Every Voice, Every Vote, a collaborative project of the Lenfest Institute for Journalism with lead support provided by the William Penn Foundation. Learn more at www.everyvoice-everyvote.org. Editorial content is created independently of the project's donors. Let me tell you something, and don't you ever forget it. Success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media.
Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We're talking about everything, quite honestly, but we've we've just had, we've been having a hearty conversation about health and um, medical procedures and everything as it pertains to radiation, chemotherapy, um, different parts of, well, I should say cancer of different parts of the body. How about that? That's the better way to phrase that. We, and I, I've been enjoying the conversation with each and every one of you. If there is anyone out there who would like to join the conversation with us, feel free to do so. You can call us at 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. As some of our family members heard earlier, Chloe, my fur child, she joined the conversation <laughs> too. Lily said hi. Lily, Chloe says hello to you too. <laughs> she likes to participate wherever I am. She just wants to be. And, you know, I don't mind it because she's my whole heart on the outside. <laughs> but before the, before the uh, commercial break, I'd ask Dr. Bailey, if she was able to share with us one of one of the more difficult cases that you've experienced. I think one that comes to mind is when I had to treat a nine-year-old boy. That was very hard. Maybe. Yes. Nine years old. We bonded immediately. I bonded with his mother, Rebecca, immediately. It was just unreal. We, um, the chief of our department sent uh, Lucas was his name and uh, the family and myself to an Eagles game. He loved the Eagles. They played the Cowboys, which was a crazy game. They won that year. Um, and just to see him come into the the office with a smile on his face mm. and his mother with a smile on his face. And it, it was beautiful. It was hard because he was nine years old and I'm like, what's happening? Um, so yeah, that was hard. I'm listening to you say this and never once did I think about our babies. Mm -hmm. What type of, if you don't mind me asking, what, what, in what part of his body did he have cancer? He had his um, cancer in his abdomen. That's how. Um, oh, mm. I, and I know, I know, I know our babies have the same experiences. I, I'm aware, but it, during this entire conversation, my entire, my focus was on what we were talking about most. And that was breast cancer. So I never once thought about our baby, our babies, but I cannot imagine. I can't imagine a nine-year-old mm -hmm. having cancer. I, I family, I know you're saying I, it, it's, I know it's a part of life for some of our babies, but it, just the thought of it, I know talking about an adult trying to navigate and manage um, cancer and chemotherapy and radiation. And now we're, you know, talking about one of our babies having to do so. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine. Um, we actually have another caller right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, Viola, are you still there? I believe we have a caller on the line. Are you still there? Hi. Am Hi. I Viola? Yes. Hi, Viola. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm always telling my story, and I'm quite sure a number of folks with Word Radio have heard it many a times. But when you have breast cancer on, I just have to call because I was telling your producer, I'm celebrating a 40-year survivor. Yes. And I'm yes. here by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I was 33 years old when my mother passed away from breast cancer and she was 49. Wow. It was the big C back then and they died from the fear of knowing that they might have had cancer because they didn't oh. want to say the word. Mm -hmm. But three years later, there I am, 1983, with breast cancer, a lump high up on my chest. Within two weeks, between March the 29th and April the 13th, I had seen four doctors, had a, um, you know, a biopsy, and wound up having a mastectomy with reconstructive surgery within a two-week span. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and I man. said, Lord, if you take my organs, but don't give me no medicine. I saw my mother go through the chemo, the radiation. She wound up dying from metastatic bone disease. Oh. But here I am three years later with breast cancer. And I blame a lot of it on stress because I was really stressed behind the fact, 33 years old, I never thought I'd be without my mother. Right. My grandmother lived to be 85. She passed away from colon cancer, but she had a fall. She had part of her colon removed at the age of 82. Mm-hmm. And they sent her home with no chemotherapy. And when she fell, it kind of ruptured everything inside. And mm-hmm. next you know, there was the cancer. She said, I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and she didn't. And she just said, I'm just sitting here waiting on the Lord. And she waited. And she didn't, it, it wasn't a long period, but, you know, she refused to take any chemo because of my mom, which was her daughter. Mm. But I tell you, I've changed a lot of my diet, but you just happen to be talking about chicken, and I would have just went to Royal <laughs> Farms and got me a piece of chicken. But <laughs> it's, all, it's all about how much you eat. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. They, got you, they got you coming for this stuff because it's high salt content. And my great-grandson, he said the same thing. He said, oh, my mom, he said, it was rather salty. I said, yes, because when you're not used to eating salt, everything mm-hmm. is salty. Yeah. It's so true. And more sodium. But I tell you, I am just so thankful to be alive Amen. to share my story. I tell, I tell strangers in the market or whatever, women, because they need to know yes. that you can have breast cancer, but you don't have to die from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't tell you that I took no chemotherapy, no radiation, and I had a baby two years later. Um, what? And I nursed her with the one breast. Wow. And I was married to my husband for 44 years when he passed away from cirrhosis of the liver. Mm. Wow. So, you know, I know about the, the, the triple negative. One of my cousins, 63 years old, worked at Children's Hospital. She died from uh, triple negative breast cancer. Mm. And I'm not afraid of looking at programs that's going to give me information. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to look at the program tonight about the black women and pregnancy and, you know, why they're having such difficulty in, in child uh, bearing and all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it was on last night and I missed it, but I'm going to look at it tonight uh-huh. because I mean, I had five pregnancies and I mean, I was in there and out, but I did have three to four days too, because <laughs> it was different than it was now. They sent me on floor and have mercy after a day. I'd have a fit. <laughs> You know, but I enjoy your show, Carol, and yeah. I, I be listening sometimes. I'm in my car driving from somewhere or whatever, so I'm listening sometimes. Can't do Facebook, you know, at that time, but I listen. And oh. um, I just had to call tonight because of the subject matter, because women need to know that breast cancer is not a death sentence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, oh, and my goodness. I am, I'm 75. So, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I everywhere, everywhere I go, I drive. Wow. And, um, you know, one of my guys that I drive cars for just called me up and said, am I, am I available tomorrow? Yes, I am. I that's the money that I don't have to tell Uncle Sam about. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I you know, know that's right. Yes. But, yes, I, I do. I love it. I drive everywhere. <laughs> They, they laugh at me. You know, my mother's on the road all the time. I mean, I, my daughter and I drove to Oklahoma in four days and back home from Delaware. What? And came back. I, I, I got 247,000 miles on my car. So okay. that's how much I drive. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I'm going through something with a lady that had, you ever heard of someone having cancer of the appendix? Yeah. No. Did you know well, yeah. Dr. She's Bailey has. She's 70 years old and she had fourth stage cancer of the appendix, but she's going the natural route. Okay. I gave her a few things, talked to her about different things that I've done, change your diet, stop eating meat, mm-hmm. you know, but the sodium, the additives and all that's in a lot of stuff, you got to, you know, do it different. And like I told Dr. Blake on Sunday, I ate beets on Tuesday and I saw them on Wednesday. I know. Listen, I love beets. I, Miss Viola, if you don't mind, I have a question for you. What was the biggest change you made in your diet? Mm. I did, I wasn't really a heavy meat eater anyway, but because we were raised mostly on chicken. 
Okay. So I can okay. Do without beef, and you know, I, mm-hmm. I mean, I do cream chip beef at a diner maybe about once or twice a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's but I eat fine. a lot of vegetables. I do a spoonful of garlic every morning and drink a glass of water behind it. I do one cup of coffee only with honey in it instead of half and half and sugar. And basically, I went to a Mexican uh, supermarket the other day, and they had cane sugar. It says cane sugar, and it's from the natural cane, and they tell you the process of it. It may be too sweet for some of us, but I use honey in my coffee. I put honey in my oatmeal. I put honey in most things. When I cook my greens, Swiss chard, red Swiss chard, green Swiss chard, cut it up with onions and some bell pepper or whatever, Mm -hmm. and garlic. And I found some black, listen, I told my grandson, I said, I told you, God made a whole lot of stuff black other than us. Yes. Black garlic. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? I've never heard of black garlic. Me neither. Black garlic. And didn't I find some black sand in the beach down here in Lewis and Delaware? I've heard of that, yeah. Yes. Wait, I, but I, n- I never saw it at, in Delaware. I never saw black sand in Delaware. I didn't know oh, we had I it here. It, I got it in Lewis. I got it in Lewis. In the Lewis Beach in uh, Lewis, uh, Delaware. When I saw it, I went crazy. I said, black sand. I said, oh, my gosh. Black pussy willows. Black squirrel. And the black squirrels, yes. At Temple, they used to always. They were, they were a mess. They are running oh like. God. They run rampant in Detroit. I oh, mean, what? every block you turn in, there's black squirrels all over the place. I, you and know there's what? some out there on the main line off of um, off of uh, Winfield in the Winfield area, mm-hmm. going toward Lankanore Hospital. That's where I first saw them. My 37 year old daughter, she saw a black squirrel. But she was about nine years old, and I said, "Where?" I turned <laughs> my said, "Where?" And went said, back wait. up that street so that I could see this black oh, no. squirrel. And I You're a you. mess. <laughs> no, listen, oh, Miss. Wait, I want to say this to you. I, yes. I want you to hear me say it. I, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story because I know you were listening to me say that you know I'm not as educated as I feel I could be and should be. So it's helpful to me to hear the stories of you, Miss um, Cheryl, Miss um, Miss Ro- Ms. Rowena. You know, to hear the stories that you're sharing and to and to to actually have your transparency. It means it means the world to me because, it, you know, like I said, I, I had family members that had breast cancer, but I didn't. Do, I still haven't done research, and I have other family members who've had different types of cancer. So mm-hmm. to hear you, to hear you, and to hear the vibrancy that the both of you have, I mean, it, it just gives me so much hope. So much, so much hope. You know, as we talk about something that. You know that there's just been such a a, a a dim light about whenever you talk about cancer, we we don't oftentimes talk about the success stories. So it, just to hear you speak about it and to share and to, I mean and to 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 say everything that you have overcome, yeah. <laughs> I mean you just you you are amazing. You are phenomenal. You and Miss Cheryl, you you are both phenomenal, phenomenal. So I can't thank you enough. I, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here now. Now, Miss Miss Viola has me thinking about black sand and black garlic. I'm going to be on the hunt for some black garlic, okay? Because I want it, and, you know, I want it so I can cook with it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm on the journey, trying to do better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Omg, we um, I can't say how much I am really appreciating just the contributions to the conversation Mm -hmm. the family it means the world to me um miss lily says she went to radiation therapy in 2017 for breast cancer and she said she has got to say her doctor Mm -hmm. and her uh, the the, his assistant Uh displayed the utmost compassion Mm -hmm. she said it it enabled her to remain in a confident state of calmness Mm -hmm. during that phase of her treatment plan and like you were saying and we both admit and agree it just means so much and it helps. It, yeah. it helps with your process. Absolutely. You know, you're already stressed. Mm-hmm. You are already stressed about what you're, what you're, well, about the unknown yeah. and about what you're dealing with and about what your body is going through, Absolutely. you know, that you can't control. Absolutely. You know, so it, it really helps to have people like yourself, Dr. Bailey, and, and those others who are in the healthcare profession that actually demonstrate some compassion, that are compassionate, that actually care. 
that, that, that goes such a long way. Um, family, when we come back, we're going to go back to our phone lines because we have some other family members I'm so happy to say that are going to contribute to the conversation with us. If you have just joined us, I want to let you know that you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com I like to make sure you know that it's WURD radio.com Calm. Okay, we're talking with Dr. Nia Imani Bailey, but we've got so much more to talk about. So stay with us, okay, because we're coming right back. COVID-19 may be milder for kids, except when it's not. Healthy kids can still become seriously ill, and immunocompromised children and those with underlying conditions like asthma are even more susceptible. If your kids are unvaccinated, they're not protected. Protect your kids and everyone around them. Get them vaccinated or boosted today. Learn more at covid19.nj.gov. What are you waiting for? If you've been enjoying the information and interviews WURD provides every day or come out to our community events, it might be time to become a member. This year marks the 20th anniversary of WURD, and there's no better time to join the forward movement. Sign up or renew your sustaining membership at just $90 or your digital membership for just $5 a month. Join online at wordradio.com forward slash membership or pick up the phone and give us a call at 215 425 7875 press 4 for assistance the time to join is now what am i waiting for april is national poetry month Scat, cat, scat, but that ain't love ain't love that ain't satisfaction that be that rap rap that rap that sappy do that it ain't love if cat don't slap that be that in fat, that be that cat be love if you ain't cat's doormat. Cat scat, but they ain't love if cat a street rat. Be that fat pockets cat, be that hustling cat, be that cat with permanent plats, no dax. That bad cat dance with death getting quick spats, war gash on his back. Be that cat scat with rap to snap your back and daughter. That cat too black, too much attitude. That cat like to slap. That cat scat lyrics cat keep you fat like that, like daddy. But mama no flag, he be that rat-a-tat-tat on my window. He got me doing mathematics, be that tap-tap dancing, slick cat taps on my window. On bare black back, you got me cat with permanent plaques. That's vintage poetry from Yolanda Wisher on WURD, progressive black talk media. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We're going to go back to our phone lines. I believe we have a family member waiting to join the conversation. Are you still there? Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? Actually, I'm doing good for an old girl. Thank you so much. <laughs> I listen. We're seasoned, right? I like that. I like it. <laughs> well, last night, I listened to a podcast that one of my friends uh, was a speaker on, and it was called the Elderberry Series. And we were so taken by that, our friends, that we are all elderberry. We're dark, we're sweet, we're juicy, and we're good for you. Wait a minute, I gotta put that in my in my pocket. Hold on, wait. The elder bear, wait a minute. I like it. I like it. I it's like it. It's a podcast, the Elderberry series. The Elderberry, and I take my Elderberry uh every day now since All I was, right you know, talk, listen. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to think that I'm a part of that. The elderberry. I like that. Yeah. Let me yeah. text it to myself because you know I can't remember anything. Let me text <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> like, you know there's something for that called CRS, but I'm not gonna say what I'm <laughs> Don't you do it. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. But um, I'm calling because I was listening for 
the information about the documentary, like what it was titled? Is it is it prepared? Yes, for distribution. How can we access it? And uh, then my other question had to do with sometimes after treatment, it's my understanding that sometimes people collect maybe additional cells or fluid, and I can't quite uh, identify what that's called, but sometimes you have to go maybe through massage therapy, and there are massage therapists that specialize in addressing that particular um, after breast treatment, um, after breast treatment phenomenon. So that's pretty much what I like to what I'd like to know, and I thank you both very, very much for the information. I'm taking notes to send back to my family because I do have some younger um, nieces and even nephews whose mm-hmm. um, mother had breast cancer, my sister, prior to being 50. So I want to make sure that, you know, they have as much information as possible, and we do have a strong family history of just cancer in general, not necessarily just breast cancer. So thank you so much. Same. Thank Absolutely. you. I can't thank you enough for bringing us back to the conversation about the documentary, too, because uh, it is important that we share. How can our family members see it? What is the title of it? Thank you so much for that, because I got away from it. Absolutely. Um, The title is called A Letter to My Sisters, a breast cancer documentary for young women. Um, And right now we're hosting screening. So there's one screening that's coming up June 10th. And that's at Theater Inn in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, And it's from 1 to 2.30, and it shows the documentary. There's another documentary we're having at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and that's October 7th. And all of this information can be found um, on my website. It's drniaimanibailey.com. And so we're very excited. We're having another screening with the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition. That's going to happen virtually. So we're really trying to get it out there just to educate the community. And to your point, it's called lymphedema. And you're absolutely right. Sometimes after treatment, women have to have massages and just kind of get that fluid just to go elsewhere in their body. Because sometimes, to your point, um, their uh, arms kind of get bigger because the fluid is located in one location and it can be throughout the body. So massages, physical therapy um, that can help the lymphedema in uh, the women who receive treatment. Oh, wow. I thought lymphedema was something totally different. I I want to go back to what you said. You were talking about the screenings. Family, excuse me, for anyone who is interested, feel free to email me at loveandlife at wordradio.com, and I will make sure you have all of that information. I'm going to ask Dr. Bailey to give me all the dates, all the locations for the screenings. I I will share with you the title of the documentary as well. Email me. Mm -hmm at love and life at wordradio.com. You know, it's W-U-R-D radio.com. And for those who would like to visit Dr. Bailey's website, would you please tell us the web, the name of the website again? And would you spell it for us too, please? Sure. That's also important. Sure. Dr. Nia Imani Bailey.com. So D-R-N as in Nancy, I-A. I M as in Mary, A N I B A I L E Y. Yes, that's long. My parents they did they did it to me. <laughs> Blame <laughs> you Narda. <laughs> you have a beautiful name. You have a beautiful name. I love it. I love it. That's Dr. Nia Imani Bailey dot com. It was dot com, right? That's dot me. com. And again, like I said, family. If you would like additional information, any of the information, quite honestly, if you didn't get it, if you did it, weren't able to write it down fast enough, I will send it to you. If you just shoot me an email at loveandlife at wurdradio.com. I know you're saying, look, now that's a lot of information, but I'm telling you. If you just shoot me an email, I will make sure I put it all in the email. And you can also go to Dr. Bailey's website to uh, to find out, too. Dr. Bailey, I, I'm looking at the time and I, I, know, I know we only have, you know, a few minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us? 
you know, I, I'm just so thankful, number one, for this opportunity. I'm a huge fan of yours, number one. Let me plug that in. You are oh. phenomenal. It's beautiful to see your career and the trajectory and your growth. It's just, just absolutely amazing. Um, it's, it's beautiful. Thank it's beautiful. You. I, Thank I absolutely you. Love, it. I love it. 100%. Um, so let me first say that. Mm. Secondly, you. you know, I appreciate all the callers. I mean, and it's so important you can receive modern or modern Western medication or to the point of Miss, I believe, Viola, she didn't receive chemotherapy or, radi or radiation. So, you know, it's whatever works best for you. I never want to push anything just to share the information that I know because I'm a radiation therapist. I um, mm -hmm. kind of back radiation, but it's whatever's best for you always advocate for yourself. That's so important. Know your body, know how it feels, know how it looks, know your family cancer history. That's so important, you know, because my father had prostate cancer that actually increases my risk of having breast cancer. So it's very important to know that. Talk to a genetic counselor and say, hey, I have multiple family members with cancer. Do I need genetic testing? The answer probably might be yes. And then you'll receive that information for yourself, determine what you need to do. You know, we have uh, life is short and we want to make sure we live it being happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, my goal is to educate. You know, I believe in being obedient to God. And at the end, I want him to say mm -hmm. I did everything well done. So that's the goal. And I want mm -hmm. to do. That. Thank you for having Same. me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. I, I just love you to pieces. I, I, I can't thank you enough for coming to spend some time with us. I really can't. And I'm hoping that you'll come back. Will you come back um, to visit us sometime? Yes, Will you? Be. Yeah, we, we, you know what, as a matter of fact, we must talk, uh, especially uh, um, after uh, the documentary is aired and, and we have some family members that, that go to some of the sightings to yes. see it because I want, I want to continue this conversation. I think yes. it's again, so important. And now that, you know, my interest has been piqued even more and, and, and I need to know more. I need to continue this education. Um, Joey, hi there. Joey Dixon is joining us on our socials. See that? See that? I got you in, Joey. I got you. <laughs> Joey, Joey says peace and jazz to you. Um, Lily says, thank you, Dr. Bailey. Um, I, I know that Cheryl, Rowena, Lily, Joey, um, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, everyone else that I, whose name I'm forgetting to mention, Kia, Kia Harris Carr, um, Nasir. I know that all of our family members are thanking you, um, as as I am, as I am, because you've just shared so much, so much. Family, you know, you know what time it is. You know, this is the part of the show that I hate. <laughs> I hate when we have to wrap it up because we have such great conversations. Um, but I always, always, always want to extend my utmost gratitude to you, to each and every one of you, because you continue to support me and you continue to support love and life. And that means more to me than I could ever express and have you know and understand. Special thanks to our guest. Once again, Dr. Nia Imani Bailey, thank you so much, so, so, so much. And remember, if you want additional information, you can email me at loveandlifeatwordradio.com because I will give you all of the information that Dr. Bailey shared. Um, I want to send a special thank you to all of our callers, to Ron, to Rick, to Cheryl, to Frida, to Viola, to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for participating in the conversation because again i tell you family communication is so big for me and it means the world thank you to um the entire wurd family especially and particularly to kayla j who makes sure that everything runs smoothly kayla j produces the show and uh, um, y'all know I couldn't do it without her. I couldn't do it without her. So we, we love you, Kayla J. Our family members were showing you love, and I kept saying, I gotta say it, I gotta say it. So there you have it. <laughs> because uh I want you to know um that you are loved if you don't already know. So, family, this is when I tell you that we are all in this together. Okay. So I want you to be good to you. But please be good to those around you because, again, we're in this together, family. Be sure you join me 
Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. for another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Have a great night, everybody. I love you, but God loves you more. The Word Radio Newsletter, keeping you informed. In-